subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button people have to live in in unity we are still in transition civil society has been decimated of course we rely on media and i think the government has not done enough the international community has failed to respond no place in the world is perfect the yoga event is held here severe injustice and they should be stopped we should raise our voices condemn this uh, brutal act Hello viewers welcome to Newsweek South Asia a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations let's begin with the headlines first India slams Pakistan's bogus rhetoric at UNHRC violence continues unabated in Afghanistan amid peace talks with the Taliban And India US discuss ways to curb terror emanating from Pakistan. People in India, Jammu and Kashmir have suffered since 1947 because of Pakistan's sponsored terrorism and religious hatred. Thousands of civilians in Kashmir have lost their lives due to terror incidents. But Pakistan has been spreading misinformation against India at the international platforms. Now India has exposed Pakistan's lies about Jammu and Kashmir. Take a look. Anti-India propaganda filled with lies and self-victimization has become a part of Pakistan's diplomacy at international forums. A country which has created records in persecuting and killing its ethnic minorities is trying to lecture India over human rights. At the 45th session of the UN Human Rights Council, India slams Pakistan for peddling untruthful statements and burst its attempts of creating an anti-India environment through fabricated words and gestures. India also exposed Pakistan's ties with terrorists that it uses to wreak havoc in Jammu and Kashmir. Neither India nor others deserve this unsolicited lecture on human rights from a country that has consistently persecuted its ethnic and religious minorities is an epicenter of terrorism has a distinction of providing pensions to the individuals on the UN sanctions list and as a prime minister who proudly admits training tens of thousands of terrorists to fight in Jammu and Kashmir it is no hidden fact that pakistan occupied kashmir is being used as a terrorist training field The Pakistani army is complicit in providing funds and training to the terrorists being trained in these terror factories. Any voice of dissent against the army and terrorists is met with brutal atrocities carried out by the security agencies. It is not surprising that other relevant multilateral institutions have been raising serious concerns on its failure to stop terror financing and lack of effective actions against all terror entities in Pakistan. Mr. Vice President, the nefarious designs of Pakistan continue in Pakistan occupied parts of Indian Union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. Various reports suggest that there has been a large influx of terrorists into Kashmir from POK through LOC and many are still waiting at the terror launch pads to get into the valley these terrorists have a single point agenda of unleashing chaos and violence in india and jammu and kashmir in particular at the commands of their lords sitting in rawalpindi but all their attempts are getting thwarted by the indian security forces that have eliminated at least 177 terrorists till now in 2020 in about 72 counter terrorism operations Many of these terrorists belong to Pakistan who are working either as a part of Jaish Muhammad or Lashkar-e-Taiba. Isme kafi badi tadad foreign terrorists ki hai jinka taluq Pakistan se hai. Inme 22 terrorists jo hain wo abhi tak jo mare gaye hain wo Pakistan se jude hue foreign terrorist hain. Isse ye bhi saaf zahir hota hai ki Pakistan ki involvement दहशत गर्दी कार्रवाइयों में डायरेक्ट कितनी ज्यादा है खासतौर पे जैश और लश्कर के बीच में जो आतंकी काम करते हैं दहशत गर्द काम करते हैं उसमें काफी बड़ी तादाद जो है पाकिस्तान से भेजे हुए 
उनके अपने दहशत गर्दों की है पाकिस्तान मिस यूज इज ऑल दी ऑगस्ट ग्लोबल फोरम्स टू रेडिएट फॉल्स क्लेम्स एंड एंटी इंडिया प्रोपागेंडा इन ऑर्डर टू हाइड इट्स फेलियर्स इन टेकिंग काउंटर टेररिज्म मेजर्स अगेंस्ट द टेररिस्ट सिटिंग इन इट्स बैक यार्ड वाइल जम्मू एंड कश्मीर इज हेडिंग टूवर्ड्स पीस एंड डिवेलपमेंट पाकिस्तान इंटेंसीफाइज इट्स एफर्ट्स टू क्रिएट वायलेंस एंड अग्रेशन Afghanistan continues to face violence despite the ongoing peace talks between the Taliban and Afghan government which is being mediated by the United States after the war against terrorism launched in 2001 the meeting in Doha is the result of US Taliban peace deal signed in February this year until now the Taliban refused to meet the government calling them powerless and american puppets we have a report The United States observed the 19th anniversary of the 9/11, a series of four coordinated terrorist attacks by the Islamic group Al Qaeda. It coincided with the peace talks between the Afghanistan government and the Islamist group, who finally met in Doha with the goal of bringing an end to nearly two decades of a conflict that has destroyed the country and killed tens of thousands of people. Abdullah Abdullah who is the chairman of the High Council for National Reconciliation said he hopes for a humanitarian ceasefire and a long lasting peace and they wish to end the violence through a political settlement Abdullah also emphasized on protecting women's rights which many have feared will be eroded if the hardline Islamist militants would gain formal power the legitimate demand of our people in the aim of peace is to end the war and violence through a political settlement our people want a system based on the constitution and they ask for the strengthening of stability of the country because they have suffered enough and experienced the worst in the absence of a functioning system The current conflict has no winner through war and military means but there will be no loser if the crisis uh, is uh, resolved through submission to the will of the people. However, establishing a mutual and long-lasting ceasefire and the integration of Taliban into the Afghan government still seems difficult. Taliban have long been worried that reducing violence could give them less leverage at the negotiation table. Moreover, there are several ideological differences between the US backed government and the Taliban which still envisions a strict Islamic system for Afghanistan instead of a democratic and constitutional setup. Mujwaru cha Afghanistan yaw khalwaq mustaqil mutahid پرمختللي او ازاد هواج بي او یو داس اسلامي نظام ولري چې دولت ټول پرګنی پکشي د کوم تبعیض پرته خپل ځان وویني یو د بل سره د ورورولۍ په فضا کې په فراز صمیمیت سره ژوند وکړي The talks were a key outcome of the separate peace deal signed by the United States with the Taliban and Afghan government in February this year. But the talks were being delayed due to constant violence by the insurgent group and the dispute over the release of 5000 Taliban prisoners and 1000 Afghan soldiers that was laid out as a precondition for talks. Now, Political observers say that bringing both the warring sides on the negotiating table is a major victory for US President Donald Trump, who campaigned on ending the war in Afghanistan and is eager to see progress ahead of elections in November. According to him, there would be less than 5000 American troops in Afghanistan by election day. As a result, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo urged the warring sides to seize this opportunity to strike a comprehensive peace deal while acknowledging many challenges lay ahead. The United States doesn't seek to impose its system on others. We believe firmly that protecting the rights of all Afghans is indeed the best way for you to break the cycle of violence. Of course, I can only urge these actions. You will write the next chapter in Afghan history. 
We hope this chapter is one of reconciliation and progress, not another chronicle of tears and bloodshed. We urge you to make decisions that move away from the violence and the corruption and towards peace and development and prosperity. Meanwhile, representatives from several countries, including India, were also present at the intra-Afghan talk ceremony. India's External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar stressed upon the need of an immediate and comprehensive ceasefire and sought commitment that Afghan soil would not be used for anti-India activities. Any peace process must be Afghan-led, Afghan-owned and Afghan-controlled. And most important, the issue of violence across the country and its neighbourhood has to be effectively addressed. The rising levels of violence cannot be allowed to continue and like others, we support an immediate comprehensive ceasefire. Our friendship with Afghanistan is strong and unshaken. We have always been good neighbours and will always be so. Our expectation is that the soil of Afghanistan should never be used for any anti-India activities. Though the Afghan government and the Taliban have initiated the discussion regarding the future of Afghanistan, peace is still far from guarantee. Taliban is continuously killing dozens of Afghan security forces and civilians even after the launch of historic talks. Meanwhile, several reports revealing the Taliban's constant relations with Al-Qaeda and other Pakistan-backed terror groups pose a serious threat to the stability of Afghanistan. There are apprehensions that in such an endless and uncertain situation, U.S. withdrawal could leave the war torn country back to the status quo of the years prior to 2001. The United States and India, both victims of terrorism for over two decades, are committed to fight the menace to maintain global peace. In a recently held meeting of the India-U.S. Counter-Terrorism Joint Working Group, the two democracies rebuked Pakistan asking it to take immediate, sustained and irreversible action against terrorists, ensuring that no territory under its control to be used for harboring terrorism. India and the United States consistently remain at the target of radical Islamic terrorism emanating from Pakistan. The fight against terrorism is ongoing for the past many years but Pakistan has hardly done anything to eliminate it. The U.S.-India Counter-Terrorism Joint Working Group in a meeting held virtually denounced the use of terror proxies by Pakistan and strongly condemned cross-border terrorism in all its forms. The Indian delegation was led by Mahavir Singhvi, Joint Secretary for Counter-Terrorism, Ministry of External Affairs, while the American side was led by Nathan Sales, State Department Coordinator, for counter-terrorism. According to a press statement by India's foreign ministry, the two sides exchanged views on threats posed by UN sanctioned terrorist entities and emphasized the need for concerted action against all terrorist networks including Al-Qaeda, ISIS or Daesh, lashkar e taiba Jashi Muhammad and Hezbollah Mujahideen. India and the US also highlighted upon their efforts to address some of the world's most pressing counter-terrorism challenges including countering the financing and operations of terrorist organizations, radicalization and terrorist use of the internet, cross-border movement of terrorists, and prosecuting, rehabilitating, and reintegrating returning terrorist fighters and family members. Statement of uh, the US-India Joint Working Group on Counterterrorism is both wide and deep, I would say. Uh, they have uh, singled out Pakistan for a lot of issues and amongst those issues they have asked them to take some irreversible action as far as the Pakistani terrorist groups and their leadership is concerned. They have also singled out uh, certain terrorist groups there who are operating from Pakistan at this point in time and that includes the Al-Qaeda, the IS, the, that includes the Lash Kare Taiba, Jaish-e Mohammed as also Hezbollah Mujahideen. I would say uh, it's a very welcome kind of a statement as far as we are concerned and it's required uh, since uh, both the countries want to uh, ensure that terrorism is wiped out or at least contained globally. India is a victim of Pakistan-sponsored terrorism 
BE 2008 Mumbai attacks or attack on Pathan Court Air Base, a conspiracy was hatched by Pakistan by using its terror proxies to hurt peace, tranquility and democracy in India. Similarly, the United States also witnessed 9-11, a series of four coordinated terrorist attacks by the Islamist terrorist group Al-Qaeda in 2001. Therefore, India and the US are standing firmly on their democratic values, warning Islamabad to expeditiously bring to justice the perpetrators of such attacks. Experts believe that there is little hope and prospect of Pakistan doing enough and concrete to contain terror emanating from its soil. Pakistan treats these terrorists as national asset, as instrument of power, because Pakistan has an incapable army, a corrupt army, an inefficient army, and it has delegated its prime responsibility of fighting to gundas, to terrorists. And that, therefore, Pakistan dare not and cannot go against terrorists of Pakistan. The U.S. State Department's Pakistan report on terrorism 2019 had said that it allowed groups targeting Afghanistan, including the Afghan Taliban and affiliated Haqqani network, as well as groups targeting India, including LAT and its affiliated front organizations and JEM to operate from its territory. Pakistan is epicenter of terrorism. Pakistan supports terrorists. Pakistan supports uh, Hafiz Saeed, HM, JEM. All these people are supported, terrorists are supported by Pakistan. That's a fact. So no matter you keep, keep suggesting, keep advising, Pakistan is not going to listen. In spite of mounting global pressure on Pakistan, it is doing nothing to apprehend the dreaded terrorists and their leaders who are openly indulging in terrorism and instigating youth to follow the path of jihad or holy war. Moving on, Pakistan has been sponsoring and aiding terror organizations on its soil to launch terror attacks in India and Afghanistan. Despite the fact that the entire world, including India, are taking decisive measures to fight the novel coronavirus, Pakistan's efforts to disturb peace and harmony in India remains unflagging. Our report. The world is busy in fighting the COVID-19. But in Pakistan, there is no lockdown in terror factories and no slowdown in the terror business. Rather, these outfits are busy in conspiring terror strikes in neighboring India. According to investigative reports, there are about 40,000 terrorists in Pakistan, of which many have been declared as international terrorists by the United Nations. Most of these terrorists belong to the banned terror organizations like Jamaat ud Dawa and Jashe Muhammad, whose leaders Hafiz Saeed and Masood Azhar are roaming free and continuously running their terror operations with impunity in Pakistan. Moreover, Pakistan authorities are consistently playing a major role in training and recruitment of terrorists for these outfits. FATF is to meet in Paris in the month of October. Pakistan is desperately trying to hoodwink the world. They are taking so-called actions against terrorists and are wanting to pass anti-terrorism bills. All these are designed basically to avoid being put into blacklist. While the world has been busy fighting pandemic, terrorists in Pakistan have been roaming free and have been thinking of new ways of how to carry out further chaos and mayhem in the subcontinent as well as Afghanistan. Pakistan's secret agencies even used these terror proxies to carry out attacks on religious sites in India to create communal differences. Ever since the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi laid the foundation of Sri Ram Temple in Ayodhya, terrorists are constantly trying to target it, reveals intelligence reports. Jashe Muhammad Chief Maulana Masood Azhar stated in a message that he wants to offer prayers at the site while issuing threats that the construction of the Ram Temple was illegal. He even said that he would try every means to stop the construction of the temple. 
These state back terror outfits are the recurrent drivers of violent religious extremism in Pakistan too. They constantly target the minority communities in the country. The Islamists even stalled the construction of Shri Krishna Mandir in Islamabad. It is yet another reminder of religious extremism deeply rooted within Pakistan's establishment. They feel that there will be huge communal violence in India where they will get maximum media payoffs and maximum international attention. It clearly indicates the mindset of religious out and religious outlook of Pakistan. Notwithstanding the problems that they have within their own country, they continue to ignore those problems and continue to focus on how to create chaos and mayhem and communal disharmony in India. There are thousands of illegal madrasas or religious schools in Pakistan where Islamic fundamentalism forced many youth to join jihadi activities. Pakistan has been on the grey list of the Financial Action Task Force since June 2018 and was given a warning in February this year to complete a 27-point action plan. Failing to comply with its guidelines, Pakistan is now pretending to increase financial curbs on terror organizations by proposing legislations related to the FTF as part of the country's efforts to escape from being blacklisted by the global money laundering and terrorist financing watchdog. However, such revelations of terrorists operating freely in the country expose the real face of Pakistan before the world. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Yeshi signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.